Happy heavily 80th birthday to the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin. X-Man 1991 back again with another anniversary rant. We have not one but two classic hip-hop albums turning 25. I think it's best if I start. If you see my shirt. You see my shirt that I'm wearing because... That's right. The first album we're going to talk about. Let me get this right. Let me get this right. Let me get this right. March 25th, 1997, two weeks after his death, the Notorious B.I.G. second and first posthumous album, Life After Death, was released. Of course, this album was released on Bad Boy and Artista Records. This was the second double disc hip hop album with Tupac's All Eyes on Me being the first. This was Biggie's second and last album that he made when he was still alive and his first album being released posthumously after his death. It was set to be released on Halloween of 1996, but due to Biggie being involved in a car accident two months, a month before that, the album's release date was pushed back to 1997. The album quickly debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 and number one on the top R&B slash hip hop albums chart and was certified diamond. The three singles from the album include Hypnotize, Mo Money Mo Problems and Sky's the Limit. But I know all the songs on this album. Besides those three songs, Somebody's Gotta Die, Kick in the Door, Fuck You Tonight, Last Day, I Love the Dough, Was Beef, Niggas Bleed, I Got a Story to Tell, Notorious Thugs, Miss You, Another, Going Back to Cali, Tank Crack Commandments, Play a Hater, Nasty Boy, The World is Filled, My Downfall, Long Kiss Goodnight, and You're Nobody Till Somebody Kills You. I know all the songs on this album. Both Disc 1 and Disc 2 have 12 tracks each, which means the whole album has 24 tracks. Guest appearances include Robert Kelly, The Locks, Jay-Z, Angela Winbush, Mace, Puff Daddy, Bone Thugs and Harmony, 112, Lil' Kim, Too Short, Carl Thomas, and DMC from Run DMC. Wow, I know all the guest appearances without looking on the album. Let's see who made a guest appearance on there. So, you already know what my thoughts about this is. 25 years later, this album is a classic. It's fucking sad that Biggie did not live to see this album get released. Just like Tupac didn't get to live to see the Don Illuminati, the Seven Day Theory get released. No artist deserves to die before their album gets released. Worse than that, it also sucked there was no Life After Death tour. Damn. Either way, this album was definitely a classic. I don't have no favorite tracks on the album because I like the whole album. No skippable tracks from start to finish. I just wish Biggie was still here celebrating 25 years of this album. Because he died two weeks before the album got released. It's just sad that he did not live to see this album get released. Can't believe it's been 25 years since Biggie left us. And this year, he would have been 50. Just like Tupac last year. 
But I just want to say happy anniversary to the Life After Death album. It's sad Biggie is not here celebrating 25 years of it 25 years later. But it's definitely a classic to me. Now let's talk about the second album that's 25. All right. Today's also been 25 years since Tracy Lee released his debut album, Many Faces. The album actually has two different release dates, March 25th and April 8th of 1997. But the actual release date was March 25th, so Tracy Lee and Biggie's albums were released on the same day. Production was handled by Tracy Lee himself, D-Dot, Ron Lawrence, and DJ Parley. The album debuted at number, oh my god, 111 on the Billboard 200 and number 23 on the top R&B slash hip-hop albums chart. The album only had one single, It's Party Time, Oh It's Party Time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that song. It also had the remix on there featuring uh, Busta Rhymes and Pirate. I know two songs on this album. It's Party Time and, of course, my all-time favorite, Keep Your Hands High featuring the Notorious B.I.G. This was one of the last collaborations that Biggie did before he got killed. You should go back and watch the video how Tracy Lee explained how Biggie did not write his lyrics down when they was making that song. And that's why Biggie pretty much influenced some other rappers to not write lyrics down like Lil Wayne and Drake. Hell, even Jay-Z. He paved the way for Jay-Z too. I know Jay-Z don't write no shit down. That's why the nigga so overrated biting lyrics from other rappers. But first MC that I've seen or heard that never wrote his lyrics down was Biggie. Twenty five years later, this album is a classic too by Tracy Lee. That's sad that this album did not get the promotion it deserved. Tracy Lee put out a classic album. I wish it would have got certified gold or platinum. But I also want to congratulate Tracy Lee for 25 years of his first album. I'm glad he was able to collaborate with Biggie before Biggie got killed. That's crazy that uh, both Biggie and Tracy Lee's albums were released on the same day. Although both albums, although the album... Um, had two different uh, release dates, March 25th and April 8th. But I'm assuming today is the actual 25th anniversary of Tracy Lee's Many Faces. So that wraps up my quick rant celebrating 25 years of the Notorious B.I.G.'s Life After Death and Tracy Lee's Many Faces. If you're new here, hit subscribe if you like the content and hit that notification bell for my next anniversary rant. Give this video a thumbs up. Leave your comment down below on what are your two cents on these two albums turning 25 on the same day. I'll be back around 10 for my third and final rant, reminiscing 20 years of the 2002 draft from the March 25th, 2002 edition of Monday Night Raw. Happy 25th to the Notorious B.I.G.'s Life After Death and Tracy Lee's Many Faces.